Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts of which is the best character to pick up in the 4-star selector that's coming out in version 2.1. I was thinking, how do I do this? What's the best possible way I can address every single one of you who have different account states, different Eidolons that your character has for every single account? I think the best way to approach this is talk about units on their own, what value they bring, as well as individual Eidolons, which is the key ones I want you to look out for. If you have them, likely you want to shift it up in priority a little bit. In terms of overall, let me just start with the TLDR and overview for any of you who want a long story short. If you have no idea who you want to pick, you don't care about Eidolons, which you should, um, in general, I think follow the characters that you will use on a daily basis. In general, most of them actually scale very nice with Eidolons. Some of them have critical ones, but overall, you can't really go wrong with characters that you use on a daily basis. And some of you might be wondering, what about Gallagher? Of course, now as time of recording, I don't have him on this account. But some of you might be wondering, Gallagher is a new character, is he very good? If you are planning to pick him up, his key Eidolons are 2 and 6. 2 is when he starts to cleanse. 6 is of course when he has increased weakness break efficiency. Those are two critical ones that you can think about. So after you're done like pulling on Acheron's banner, Luotar's banner if you're pulling, and then decide from there on. But those are the critical ones. Now let's talk about individual characters overall. Let me start off first from basically left to right and the DPSs towards the end, Hanya. Now this is my Hanya here. I know some of you are looking at the speed. This is my fastest character in Honkai Star Rail. It's on set too. But uh, flexing aside, what does she do? She's really good for uh, giving back skill points to your team. She's a very solid speed buffer as well. If you guys don't have Sparkle on your account, maybe you didn't pull for a character like Sparkle, an alternative really uh, in terms of buffing, plus also a little bit of like damage enhancement is, is in Hanya. Hanya is really, really strong in that sense. Uh, out here, it basically gives whatever speed that uh, Hanya has to the target, 20% of that speed. So let's say my speed is somewhere around like 193. Uh, I'm giving like roughly 40 speed to that target uh, before any multipliers and, and whatever adjustments are given. Uh, but not only are you giving speed, you're giving a lot of attack to a, a target as well, making her combo very nicely for other buffers in the game that don't really give that much attack and speed. For example, maybe like Ro uh uh, like like run me and stuff like that all those characters don't give too much attack and speed so that is something that she does on top of that her skill she basically puts like this um, it's not a debuff unfortunately i have no idea why it isn't considered a debuff it literally sounds like a debuff but once you place this burden on the enemy you every couple of attacks you get some skill point back it's a very good way of channeling more refunds into your roster as well and other than that um, basically, she increases the damage when the enemy is inflicted by this burden debuff of by 31%. So kind of like buffing your whole team, you have your out there buff single target, but the, the burden that she applies is basically like buffing your entire team as well, which is pretty strong. Her critical Eidolons, now that I've, I've talked a little bit about her as well, what are the most important ones? In my opinion, she skills very nicely across the board. Like all Eidolons help her get better. Uh, if you have no other urgent pressing ones, these are okay. They don't really change her playstyle, except I think for E4, it's probably the most important one, which extends the duration of the out by one turn. Uh, E6 is also like nice, but it's not super, super critical. You will want to like check out the other ones. So why do I say E4 is the most important for Hanya? It's because ultimate duration extension means that you will have, instead of a two turn, you have a two plus one, three turn rotation. She has a very high burst cost of 140, and generally speaking, it combos very nicely with her other Eidolon here, the E1. When your target defeats your enemy, Hanya moves faster. Um, you want that to be as long as possible uptime because generally Hanya will probably be the fastest moving character on your team. Most of the time, if not second fastest, if you are buffing your, your teammate that, that is already a very fast unit to begin with, you want her to be able to keep up with that unit. You want her to have uptime on her out as much as you can. E4 is really just super good for that. So that's for the first character, a pretty straightforward one. E4 is the most important. Let's talk about another Harmony unit now, and that will be a character like Yukong. This one is very easy to explain. She basically buffs crit rate, crit damage, a, a ton of it. Really, really strong at that, but she's very, very tricky to use. Hanya gives a lot of skill points. Yukong drinks skill points like crazy. Her critical Eidolon, and if you're playing like imaginary teams and you have her at E6 is when I think she's the strongest and is very, very viable. A lot of like zero turn rotations do have Yukong to some extent because this crit buffing multipliers are ridiculous. 28% crit rate, 65% crit damage. Uh, very, very huge. On top of that, you have a, a 
like damage buffing. Where's the damage buffing? So your attack increase like eighty percent, and I think she also has like another buff somewhere in her rocky like imaginary here. Uh, tons of buffing that this character can provide, big PP numbers and whatnot. But E six is the critical one. Everything else just is is just making its way towards that E six. Um, and this is really the one that is super important. If you have Yukong somehow at like E five, pick her at E six. You know, I really think that they are delaying rerunning Yukong on the banner. Uh, she, she's 11 cycles not appeared so far. It's because people, Hoyoverse knows this is how OP, how strong Yukong is at E6. You, when you use your out, you immediately get one stack of Roaring Bowstring. This basically allows you to control when your DPS gets the skill point. Uh, just before your DPS move, you press that out on Yukong, you get that buff. So not only does Yukong get the buff, your next DPS moving thereafter is going to get it as well. This is a very critical one. If you are planning to play imaginary teams and you want to play Yukong, E6 is probably a must to make her super viable. Now, next character. Uh, we talked about two harmony units, but let's move on a little bit to a DPS and then we'll talk about links, a character that is free as well. I don't have her at E6 here, uh, Xue Yi. I've, I've said a lot of good things about her. In my opinion, if you are a new player, you don't have many DPSs in the game, this is a very solid character to start off with because she tackles, she's a good DPS, a very strong DPS. You have free play light cones available for her, very easily accessible. What I like most about this character is you can target all sorts of enemies. It ignores enemies' weaknesses, which means that if you are a new player progressing the game, you don't have much resources to build like so many elemental DPSs just to tackle the rotations and stuff like that. Shei will always be kind of relevant throughout the ages. You might not be like 36 starring and full clearing everything, but at least you can get a little bit of gems and that is very important, especially if you're a player that is new to the game, you don't have too much resources as well. So quick, that's the quick narration of this character. What are her critical eidolons and is there any? The most most important out of all of them is E2. This one is super good because when she follow up attacks, that follow up attack is also, uh, and uh, regardless of whatever weakness you have, it's also like a colorless breaking. Colorless meaning you can target really any element, doesn't matter it's quantum or not. This is very, very strong. The HP heal on the side is like a side bonus, but this is a really, really strong one because it just plays into a strength as a colorless weakness breaker to help you tackle more content as a new player just coming into the game. Having characters like this in your arsenal is very good, especially if you have, don't have an element that you're strong against. For example, maybe you just don't have fire characters built. Uh, you bring Xue Yi, she will address that as well. The next one that I think is super good is the E6. This is also very strong because her base line of stacks to get the talent follow-up is 8. This brings it down to 6, which is a very, very uh, quick drop in terms of the amount of a requirement for her to do more colorless breaking as well. So 2 and 6, the critical ones for Xue Yi. Very, very strong character. I like this character a lot. If I didn't have so many characters on my account, this character probably I'll be building and maxing her out ASAP. Next up, Lynx. A free character, so I won't talk about how good she is as a character. If you play her, you haven't moved on to like characters like Ho Ho and Luo Ta. I would say this is a very safe character to get Eidolons off. There are no real like critical Eidolons that she has. All of them basically make her job even better. She, whatever she does, she does it a little bit better. Nothing changes her playstyle too much. Uh, just makes it a little bit better in everything that she does. Especially if you're having maybe a hard time sustaining units solo with Lynx, getting her Eidolons will always help you progress a little bit. I think Lynx is a very safe pick if you have no idea what you want to do. Maybe you don't care too much about Gallagher as well, the new characters coming out. You're happy with Lynx. You uh, use that, that Eidolon, the choice. Pick up Lynx. I think it's a very, very good and safe bet out of all. Now, I need to go and switch my teams here so it's easier for us to, to switch around. Let's talk about the remaining three characters on this list, which really are the DPS characters um, in general. First off, let's talk about Kuei Naifen. So Kuei Naifen, she's a DOT character, but on top of that, some people might be playing her together with Akron, as well as if you don't have, maybe maybe for some reason you don't have Pella, um, you pulled on the banner, you didn't get her or something like that, or you already have Pella, you want another Nihility character on the team, you don't play DOT at all. She's a very solid character to pair with um, a character like Akron. Why? It's because she applies this like fire kiss debuff to the enemy, which amplifies damage that they take. So uh, you have a defense shredder in like Pella. Now you have a damage amplification in uh, Kuei Naifen. Very, very solid combo. If you're just looking for your base team, I will highly consider picking her up. She eventually can be played alongside like Kafka teams, Black Swan teams, if you are looking for a DOT aspect as well. So pretty versatile overall character, quite affordable to build. 
Um, she is a very stable character, similar to Lynx. There are no critical eidolons. There are like some that are better, and I'll share with you a bit. No critical ones so far, except like E4 and E6 probably is a little bit better. Uh, for blocking Pike with Neck, every time burn status causes damage, which is quite often whenever the the enemy moves us, or like Kafka popping. I, I'm not too sure whether Kafka pops, so I'll, I'll hold that. If any of you who are Queen Knife and mains, let me know in the comments below as well, whether that also regenerates energy. But anyway, whenever the enemy moves, they get that burn. She regenerates energy, which just gives her a lot more damage overall utility, makes her easier to build because you don't need so much requirements in terms of gear, energy restoration and whatnot. And E6, of course, is a really strong one. It increases the fire kiss count, the stackable fire kiss count by one, which means that instead of stacking up to three, now you can go up to four, which increases the amount of damage uh, amplification that she does as well, which is overall strong, but nothing game-breaking. It doesn't like make or break this character. Very, very stable character throughout the island lawns. If you're playing this character, consider picking it up. I think you'll find good value there too. Next up, Luca. Luca is similar to... Um, uh, Queen Eiffel in the sense that he's a very stable Eidolon character. He's more of like a physical single target uh, damage dealer kind of thing if you are looking for a mix between DOT, bleed as well, break, and you just don't like maybe Su Sang's playstyle in terms of the typical crit, uh, red crit damage kind of build. Uh, his critical Eidolons, there are none that are super important. It's all skills really nicely, slowly gearing up all the way to just like increasing amount of damage that he does. So no utility factor to buff the team. The most important one, in my opinion, is probably E2. Um, if skill hits an enemy target with physical weakness, he gains the stacks quicker, which allows him to do a lot more damage with his... Uh, when Once he has like two stacks of fighting wheel, he has an enhanced basic attacks, which helps him do a lot more damage. So I think probably E2 like, is his most critical one. I'm not going to dive much into him. Based on the stats, people are not playing him a lot, and I think attention or retention in the audience might not be super high as well. And last but not least, I want to talk about Misha. Misha is the last character on this list. We have a whole list, a whole video actually done on Misha already, whether this character is good or not. Long story short, very interesting character, especially if you don't have Jing Liu on your account. Maybe you are new to the game, you are just picking up a character like Akron, and you have no intention of picking up a character like Jing Liu. I think Misha is worth some attention to. Um, check that video out if you haven't. Like, is why is, is Misha worth it? It's on the channel. Just like check it out. Overall, does tons of ice break damage that uh, offers a lot of freeze potential as well. One of the best freezers in the game if you're looking for a remembrance run cheesing uh, against the deer boss in Simulated World 7. Very good unit at that. But most most people in the game, they are old timers, tend to have Ting Liu. So that's why this character doesn't really get a lot of love. Critical Eidolons is definitely, definitely E2. So uh, E1 is like, okay, it's just increasing skills with AoE. But E2 is where it gets makes this destruction character more useful in terms of utility. When you land your out, you basically have a chance of reducing enemy defense by 16%. This likely stacks with a lot of other debuffs in the game like Pella, like Silver Wolf, like Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat. So more defense breaking is very nice, especially considering that Misha is also considered a DPS character, a destruction character in general. And the next one that I think is like very, very nice is E6. Also, it's like decently good. Uh, I have to check my chart here because I have one on the, the side of my screen that I'm seeing. E6 is also strong because when using the ultimate increases own damage by 30%, um, this is part is okay. But the one that I like more is when you uh, use the out, you use your skill, you get the skill point back. So you become more skill point neutral uh, to help out in the like utility factor for the entire team, which allows Misha to play in a lot more team compositions rather than um, taking up skill points uh, from the team as well. So that is my thoughts for all eight of the characters in the game. I hope that you found this video helpful in a broad overview talking about all the characters. Uh, if you want to see more of such content on individual characters, we have team building guides on specific five stars on these characters as well. Check it out if you're interested. I think you'll find a lot of value uh, on them to help you build and make your choice better. But let me know in the comments below, which character are you planning to pick up? Uh, and if so, what Eidolon are they at? And see you in the next video.